Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Fast to my good evening, it's half past five. This is Update for Thursday, 12th of October. 2023 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes to look at the latest news on the island. Background to that news, we've got sport and business and sea watch and travel updates and the newsmakers in person this evening. Douglas Council is spending £1.4 million on the promenade. The man who killed his Manx wife will be staying in jail. Local authority reaction to the Tesco takeover. The latest on the steam packet spat with the union. And watch your view of electric training collars pets. Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of six o'clock, the update news headlines. Fast my Chanel Suku. Fast my. The UK Justice Secretary has blocked the release of a man who killed his wife with a hammer. Joanna Simpson, who grew up on the Isle of Man, was killed by Robert Brown in 2010. He was due to be freed in November after serving half of his 26 year jail sentence. The Environment, Food and Agriculture Minister says government will provide support to local businesses following ShopRite sale to Tesco. And the Treasury Minister hopes ongoing negotiations between the maritime trade union Nautilus and the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company will result in a mutually agreed solution. In international news, America's top diplomat says the U.S. will always be by Israel's side as the country prepares for possible on-the-ground fighting against the Hamas group. More than 400 children are among the Palestinians killed, with more than 1,400 Israelis also dead. Meanwhile, the UK Prime Minister has announced £3 million will go towards protecting schools, synagogues and other Jewish buildings in response to Hamas attacks in Israel. And a university professor has been sacked for saying that bilingual road signs are dangerous. Writing on Facebook, Dr. Nigel Hunt said most people in Wales don't understand them. Those were your headlines. News at six. Man Benham. Contact us by phone, video call, email or face to face. We're happy to connect with you. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Goromaya, thank you, Chanel, from the Ronaldsway Met Office. There's no wind warning in operation for the North Irish Sea. State of sea is smooth or slight, becoming moderate overnight. And a lovely evening, late brightness. The cloud will increase after dark. A southwesterly breeze will pick up and bring some rain overnight. But for the moment, lovely. Overnight minimum 13 degrees. Jahania, Friday, rain first thing, clearing up through Friday morning, then dry with sunny spells. In a fresh to strong northwesterly, top temperature 12 degrees, down to 8 through the night into Saturday. And for Jasan, sunny spells, scattered showers in a moderate to fresh northwesterly, maximum 11 Celsius. Low water was 10 minutes ago, so the tides turn. Sunset 29 minutes past 6. The late high tide, quarter past 11. Low water 18 minutes past 5 tomorrow morning. And sunrise at 19 minutes to 8. Manx Glass and Glazing are able to offer an emergency out-of-hours boarding-up service. Call 491918. Douglas Council is planning to spend £1.4 million on revamping Douglas Promenade. It includes a new £700,000 park and a redesign of the gardens. Our local democracy reporter is Emma Draper. The £700,000 for the play area will come from a loan taken out by Douglas Council. This is on top of £350,000 for renovations to Marine Garden 5 and a further £350,000 for the Queen's Promenade Gardens. The local authority says it aims to have the works completed by March 2025. Initial proposals to revamp the sunken gardens were set out in June 2021 in line with the works carried out by the government to improve the promenade. However, the promenade was hit by Storm Barra in December that year. And in May 2022, the council voted to reprioritise the works, which include flood protection and the park. As part of the budget setting process last year, the council agreed to spread the cost of the scheme over two financial years. 
A single designer will oversee the design of the three gardens to ensure a cohesive design approach and will have experience with coastal environments. There's no plans yet showing what residents can expect to see, but display boards will be installed with the details of the work once they are confirmed. The UK Justice Secretary has blocked the release of a man who killed his Manx wife with a hammer. Joanna Simpson was killed by her ex-husband Robert Brown in Berkshire in 2010. He was convicted of manslaughter but was due to be freed in November after serving half of his 26-year jail sentence is Joanna's mother, Diana Parks. Well, we were with the Justice Secretary. I was virtual with my grandchildren and my son. And Hetty Barkwas Nanton, she was actually at the MOJ offices. And first thing he said is, I'm not going to mess about. I am not allowing Robert Brown to have automatic release from prison next month. It was what we'd been praying for, hoping for, but somehow... When you receive that news, you're, wow, stunned, I think, absolutely stunned that all this hard work, this emotionally exhausting work that we've been doing with the campaign has really passed the first level, the most important level, that the Justice Secretary blocking his automatic release. It was really the law that allowed this to happen, the change of law, 2022, so thank goodness for that, and that was in the days of Sir Robert Buckland. So we're just so grateful. Alex Chalk had said to us earlier when we saw him in May that he had to be seen to be doing it properly and carefully because it's so brand new this law the crime was so horrendous and the campaign has been so good and really I just want to thank the media the public everybody who got behind us it's just been amazing I've had people from America telling me that in the States he would have been on death row it's just unbelievable how people have come behind us for this heinous crime and the travesty of the trial and the unbelievable verdict Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates. 23 minutes before six, motor vessel Manxman just on the outskirts of Douglas Bay should be on the link span in 20 minutes or so. Local authorities around the Isle of Man have been reacting to the news that Tesco's bought all nine ShopRite stores. Listen for Peel Commissioner Hazel Hannon, first Ramsey Commissioner Rob Cowell. I'd hope to say not much will change. I think the reality of it is that change will come. ShopRite's been part of our community for decades, long decades, probably 50 years and uh, we have to thank them for that service. It's very early days in the process and the offerings that ShopRite make, I imagine, will change through Tesco's hands. I think uh, they're, they're known for value. And I think that's always got to be welcomed, especially in the times that we're living at the moment, you know, cost of living crisis. And if we can bring a benefit to people's pockets, then I think that's got to be something of benefit to the community. ShopRite's supported 350 local suppliers. That's now surely at risk. Supporting local charities each year, which I'm hopeful Tesco's will continue. Concern for for the producers, both farmers and vegetables producers, who were able to sell into the store. That's the main concern. Tesco and me go back quite a long way because I was Minister for Agriculture when Tesco came in and they then promised that they would use Manx produce that was available. So I'm concerned for the street. I'm concerned for the workers, although I'm told that their jobs are secure for the moment. We don't know what's happening and whether they'll be kept open and whether the prices will will remain competitive because it's going to be a monopoly now as we don't have any monopoly legislation. The bank's government seeking your view on a proposed ban of electric training collars for cats and dogs. A six-week consultation has just opened. The story with Lewis Foster. It's said there are generally two types of these collars. Remote control devices which are known as triggers to stop unwanted animal behaviours and containment systems. Those are self-activated to reduce the chance of a pet straying away from the family home. And government says most e-collars use a warning sound to allow the animal to stop what it's doing before an electric pulse or unpleasant spray is generated as a deterrent. Political member for Environment, Food and Agriculture Dr Michelle Haywood says we're a nation of animal lovers who care passionately about protecting animals and the use of e-collars can cause unnecessary harm and suffering. If the public back the move, the ban could happen early next year and would be introduced using regulations under the new animal welfare laws 
laws that will come into effect shortly. The Animal Welfare Bill 2022 will boost protection for domestic and kept animals and increase penalties for those found guilty of animal cruelty. Amy Beckett, the Alaman government's chief veterinary officer, says the ban is being considered to protect the welfare of cats and dogs following similar steps in England and Wales. Paper copies of the consultation are available from DEFA's headquarters in St John's or government says you can call 685-844 or email agriculture at gov.im. The consultation will run until the 23rd of November. Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Motor vessel Manxman departed Hisham at a quarter past two. She's uh, she'll be just by the Tower of Refuge in the next few moments. Onto the link span, and this evening's departure is the 815 Ben McCree to Hisham arriving there just before midnight. The 0215 departure from Lancashire back to Douglas at six tomorrow morning. The high speed craft Mananum left Douglas at a quarter to two. She's in Liverpool now on the link span, departing this evening at 715 back to Douglas at a quarter to 11. Tomorrow morning's departure at 8.45, Manxman heads to Hesham. Like the Steam Packet on Facebook for the latest sailing information. An issue that's been raised by some island companies is why is it so difficult to ensure hot food delivery drivers here? Now, some firms are struggling to expand their business offerings. The answer from a director at Kestrel Insurance, Natasha Beaumont. We find the issue primarily stems from the new delivery culture that you see in the UK. And these companies that we hear about tend to pay their staff per delivery. And as a result of this, the insurance industry has seen a large increase in claims because driving has become more erratic and therefore the insurance companies have stopped underwriting these risks because it's just become unprofitable for them to do so. Our job as insurance brokers on the Isle of Man is to make presentations to our insurer partners just to prove that the Isle of Man doesn't have the same culture. Most employers pay their delivery staff per hour rather than by delivery, which just makes the road use a lot more safer over here than it is in the UK. From a paper point of view, if you were to have an insurance certificate that said that you had business use on your private car insurance certificate you know on paper that looks as though that you're covered but actually when you look at the terms and conditions of that policy sometimes you may find that the cover just may not be there so those terms and conditions that fall behind the policy are, are vital to be able to make sure that you've got the correct cover in place because it could be the difference between a claim being paid out and a claim not being paid out and if there's a third party that's say injured you could be liable for any third party damages that arise from any any accident in, in a road collision if you haven't got the correct cover in place so yeah it's absolutely vital that that cover is correct rather than just it appearing correct on the certificate. Manx Radio Business Briefing. At 18 minutes now before six, Wagamama owner the restaurant group said today it's agreed to be taken over by the private equity firm Apollo in a £701 million deal under the terms of the deal. TRG shareholders get 65p in cash per share, a premium of about 34% on the closing share price. On Wednesday yesterday, TRG chair Ken Hanna said the board continues to have confidence in the plan, but is cognizant of the premium and certain value of the uh, Apollo offer against the backdrop of a challenging macroeconomic environment. TRG directors intend to unanimously recommend the offer to TRG shareholders. And for a full daily market report, go to RamseyCrookall.com. UK tourists are spending thousands of pounds on flights to get out of Israel as commercial carriers have suspended flights after Palestinian rocket attacks and Israeli airstrikes. France and Germany have chartered flights flights to evacuate their citizens and this afternoon the UK government said it's arranging flights to get British nationals out of Israel. The first flights due out uh, of Ben Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv later with vulnerable Brits prioritised for the flights. Although arranged by the UK Foreign Office, their commercial services and each passenger is going to be charged £300. UK previously said it wouldn't arrange evacuation flights because commercial routes were still available and it was only flying out families of British diplomats working in Israel. Since Hamas attacked Israel last Saturday, many international airlines have suspended flights to and from Tel Aviv and getting a flight has become increasingly difficult. The Stock Market Report. Brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK markets closed higher as they built on positive global momentum this week. The dollar meandered. Uh, oil rose on expectations that US interest rates had peaked and gold paired gains as the dollar and treasury yields ticked higher. The numbers from Ramsey Crookall 
at the close in London. Ramsey Crookle reporting the FTSE 100 up a third of a percent at uh, 7,644. The DAX in Frankfurt closed down a quarter of a percent at 15,425. A short time ago in New York City, the Dow Jones Industrial down three-tenths of a percent, 33,717. The Nasdaq Tech Stocks Index is up a tenth of a percent at 13,674. And the S&P 500 down fractionally almost a tenth of a percent at 4,373. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling trading at one US dollar, 22.1 cents, one euro, 15.7 cents, and 23 South African rand, 10.8 cents. In commodities, gold down a tenth of a percent at $1,872 per troy ounce, and a barrel of Brent crude up nearly a percentage point at $86.27. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, and you pay in monthly as little as £100. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house, of the kids' education. £100 a month? I could easily do that. <laughs> you should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. A tribunal thrown out a claim that Manx Care was discriminatory towards a patient due to their religion and beliefs. Troy Angelo Minchard alleged he was unlawfully detained at Nobles Hospital. The story from Siobhan Fletcher. Mr Mincher received inpatient treatment at Nobles Hospital for suspected appendicitis on the 25th and 26th of October 2021. At that time, special measures were operating within the hospital relating to COVID-19. In fact, Infection control policy in place at the time included the wearing of face masks and advised staff that patients who refused a COVID-19 swab should be nursed in isolation from other patients for a period of 14 days. Mr Mincher argued that he was medically exempt from wearing a face covering and also refused a coronavirus swab, arguing he had a right to decline the medical procedure based on his own ethics and rights. Mr Mincher holds multi-faith beliefs of Christian spiritualism with aspects of Hinduism. He argued that having the COVID test inserted into the nose was against his spiritual and Hindu beliefs, as the swab was man-made and it therefore would not be natural for that to be inserted into his nose. He alleged that he was ultimately forced to wear a face covering as he had been informed that treatment would not be otherwise provided. The unanimous decision of the tribunal is that Mr Mincher was not disabled and did not hold a protected religious or philosophical belief within the statutory definitions of the Equality Act 2017. It found that Mr Mincher was entitled to refuse the Covid test, but when he refused at the hospital, he was in an environment where where there were vulnerable people. The tribunal said his unwillingness to wear a mask or take a COVID test in the best interest of others at Nobles showed inconsistency in his concern for others. It added that at a time when the hospital service, including the island's nurses and doctors, were under considerable pressures of work, due in some part to the ongoing COVID situation, Mr Minch's choice to leave the ward and walk out of Nobles Hospital without informing the staff was classed as inconsiderate behaviour which caused needless concern for his welfare, considerable wasted time and disruption. You can find the full Tribunal Judgment at manxradio.com Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates advising businesses and families since 1949 visit simcox.com or call 690 300 Manx Radio Sport. Fast am I, Dave Moore. Fast am I. Jed Edschels returns to the Isle of Man this weekend, having landed the Junior World Enduro Championship title in the final round of the series in Portugal. The youngsters become the latest Manxman to lift the crown, following in the footsteps of brothers Daniel and Jamie McCanny, who won it in 2013 and 2015, respectively. He says winning the world title has been his toughest task to date. Definitely by far the hardest thing that's ever happened in my life. I have been close... Like, in 2020 to winning a world title and then the final day had a, a bike problem and lost the world title then by two points to come back after that three years later and then get the uh, junior world title is definitely really hard and definitely mentally challenging but um, no it's a, a, a very um, relieving feeling and I um, was a uh, crown of world junior champion. Staying with off-road riding and someone leaving the island ahead of this weekend is Caitlin Adshead, the Manx youngster fresh from being part of the winning Great Britain team in the recent trial de Nation is competing in the Scott trial which takes place on Saturday. The event in Yorkshire which first began in 1914 is one of the toughest motorcycle challenges 
changes held anywhere in the British Isles. Football and Tom Career returns to the FC Isle of Man squad for this weekend's North West Counties Football League Premier Division clash away at West Didsbury and Chalton. He comes in for the first time since early September, with the team being hit by injury and unavailability. Meanwhile, the Isle of Man Football Association's announced the appointment of Lewis Qualtro as interim chief executive officer. They've also stated Kevin Maitland will stay as chief operating officer until he retires next summer. <laughs> Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound Ronald, Ronald's Way, uh, next it's the 10 to 8 Logan Air from London City, the 5 to 8 Logan Air from Liverpool, the 5 past 8 EasyJet from Manchester and the 25 to 9 EasyJet from London Gatwick. They're all showing on time. Outbound 6 o'clock Logan Air to Liverpool, the patient transfer plane, then it's the 25 to 9 EasyJet to Manchester and the 5 past 9 return EasyJet to London Gatwick. Gatwick and they're all showing on time. Newcastle Town Road's closed between Spring Valley Roundabout, the bottom of Richmond Hill for resurfacing. That's uh, through until, well, it may finish before the end of October, they hope. Hillside Avenue Douglas closed to, through to Circular Road for adjacent office window replacement. And temporary lights on Glen Crutchery Road at the roundabout with Victoria Road for resurfacing. Traffic along Glen Crutchery can't turn down Victoria Road. In Castletown, temporary lights on Farrant's Way for pavement work. Port Aaron's got Station Road closed between Brighton Street and Strand Road for repairs to the crossing area. Parking restrictions on Brighton Street there are for a temporary bus stop. Temporary lights in Greber on the main road between Greber Bridge and Ballard Crane for ducting work. In Onken, Little Mill Road and Ballard Cottier Road are closed for ditching work. And temporary lights in Port St Mary at the junction of Queen's Road and Park Road for gas main work. The matrix signs are showing everything's fine on the mountain road. H&H Motorcycles.in for all your motorcycle requirements. Southgate Industrial Estate, opposite Quayside Tyres. Call 665646. The Treasury Minister hopes ongoing negotiations between the Maritime Union Nautilus and the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company will result in a mutually agreed solution, despite talks between the two being described as having reached an impasse. The story from Christian Jones. The union previously told Manx Radio the company is refusing to engage in a resolution via arbitration. It's since been revealed the Manx Industrial Relations Service do not have a trained qualified arbitrator. It's not yet clear if this is the reason behind the company's alleged refusal to resolve the dispute, which would see staff told to remain on board the Manxman via arbitration. Manx Radio contacted the Steam Packet for clarification, but in response it says it has nothing further to add. The Steam Packet believes making this change to workers' conditions of employment will enable greater service reliability and resilience. Nautilus maintain it's been threatened with fire and rehire if its members don't agree to the proposed terms, a claim refused refuted by the Steam Packet company. However, the Steam Packet's chief executive, Brian Thompson, told Manx Radio in an interview if workers don't agree to the new conditions, they would be told there was no longer a place for them at the company. I've got no intentions of firing anyone, lowering wages, none of those sort of practices. We, we simply want to change the business model and the terms and conditions. But if people don't accept those terms and conditions, would they be told there's not a place for you in the packet anymore? Yes. So that, in effect, is fire and rehire, isn't it? I think that's a rather cruel way of putting it. Union representatives were recently on the island to gauge members' feelings. Treasury Minister Dr Alex Allenson says the senior international organiser contacted his department for a meeting ahead of the visit, but this was unable to take place as he was off-island at the time on parliamentary business. This is the most listened to Isle of Man news source, and Manx Radio's update is the Isle of Man's most downloaded news podcast. The recent freeze in the Bank of England base rates led to a significant increase in the number of home buyers seeking mortgages on the Isle of Man. From financial options, here's Paul Chase. It's certainly given the market a boost of confidence and we're, we're seeing a, a, a large increase in, in numbers of clients coming to see us, certainly for house purchases. Remortgages, not so much because rates are still high and people are being forced into a position where they actually have to probably stick with their own lender because of the cost of moving and the small difference in between the different lenders. But what we are seeing following the Bank of England putting the interest rate on 
on hold is that in the UK, a lot of mortgage companies have actually dropped their rates to a reasonable amount. Um, on the other hand, not so much, I'm afraid. Interestingly, we've actually seen an increase in first-time buyers. It's, it's almost as if the first-time buyers are, are cutting their cloth to, to what they see in front of them rather than what they've known over the last few years. So where people were potentially buying a house for 300000 they're now looking to buy something at 200000 And But the first-time buyers don't know any different um, in terms of the interest rates because for the last 10 years, obviously, they've been low. But over the last eight, nine months when these people have been coming to see us, they actually have been at that level. So that so they're kind of seeing it for the first time. I think it depends on the on the sector of the property market. So the, certainly, as I mentioned, the first on my sector is particularly busy. So properties anywhere up to sort of 300,000 are still changing hands pretty quickly. The value of the Manx government building links with politicians in the UK can't be underestimated, according to Dr. Allenson, MHK, the Treasury Minister, who's just back from the UK Labour Party conference. Part of it is understanding from politicians across about who we are, what we are and what we're not, and actually educating them sometimes because we've had a huge change in both parties. Certainly the Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister were over the Conservative Party conference. I went to Labour and we had a whole range of meetings with shadow ministers there, but also with the head of Liverpool Council and the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce there, who showed a real interest in the, in the ferry terminal, real interest in increasing visitor numbers, but going both ways and trade as well. It's a good time to actually make those initial engagements to build on relationships that we may have in the past or new ones so that actually we have that understanding of the Isle of Man but also can get our voice heard. One of the things we did together with Jersey or Guernsey was meet with the Shadow Secretary of State for Justice who would be responsible for that constitutional relationship between the the UK and the Crown Dependencies and she was extremely welcoming. She knew where we were, she knew what we were about and there was certainly no sign of any hidden agendas there. Similarly, we've done a huge amount of work with government in the UK, but also with the politicians to explain that we are a very well-regulated jurisdiction, that we've gone above and beyond some of the regulations that we need to do, but also that we work very closely with the UK government in terms of international conventions and tax compliance. So I would not be worried about a a Labour government coming forward. The main thing is that we keep those avenues of, of discussion going. And on the back of the Labour Party conference, we are hoping to arrange a series of meetings, both with the Labour Party, with the Conservative Party, but also with the present government, so that we can further those relationships and understanding. That's it for update tonight, compiled from the resources of Max Radio's news department. Thanks to newsreader Chanel Suku, producer Beth Espy. Judith Lay is on after six in the archive. Greatest hits with Chris Kinley at 6.30. Morris Powell, some light music at nine, and Rianne with The Late Show after hours at ten. And I'm back tomorrow at 5.30. W-I-N-T